This morning, our first reading is, to, is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2. In this reading, we will see how the Lord transformed the rib taken from sleeping Adam into a woman, into a wife. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper compatible to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up his flesh in its place. Then the rib which that the Lord had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Our further reading is taken from the work Conjugal Love 193. We can see that on our order of service. A woman is actually transformed into a wife, according to the description in the book of creation. We are told in this book that woman was created from the rib of a man, and that when she was brought to him, the man said, She is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called Ishisha, woman, because she was taken from Ish, man. In the word a rib, from the breast symbolically means it, it's a spiritual sense, not a rib, but natural truth. This is the symbolism of the ribs which the bear carried between its teeth in Daniel 7.5. For bears symbolize people who read the word in its natural sense and see truth there without understanding. The, beast, the breast of a man symbolize that essential and distinctive quality which makes it different in character from the breast of a woman. This quality is wisdom as may be seen above in number 187. For truth supports wisdom. As a rib supports the breast, these distinctive qualities are symbol because the breast is where all the qualities of a person are, so to speak, at their center. Amen. This morning, we honor all mothers O ladies, and their blessed femininity received from the Lord. What do you think really a woman, a woman, a man, a man? Perhaps we think the X and Y chromosomes. But these are natural and biological tools the Lord uses to make that happen. And our likeness, our appearance to the Lord that we have love and truth and good and 
good and wisdom, maybe uh, love and wisdom, good and truth. And these qualities, these essential qualities we receive from the Lord and we have them in us as our very self, our genuine, essential, proprium, our own. But we receive different things from the Lord. A male and female receive slightly different qualities from the Lord. So this distinctive resemblance of the Lord makes different essential natures. That's why we have different external forms and different way of perceiving things and different natures. Truth from good is the form of a masculine and good from truth is the form of a feminine. We are all created to continually change from infancy to the end of life and afterward to eternity after our life on earth. This is inevitable because we are born into without any knowledge even little tiny babies, they don't know how to approach the breast of the mother for milk unless they are guided in a clear contact uh, by help from mother or a nurse. They have the capability when they are born only how to suckle the milk. And even they get this capability while they are in the mom's tummy as fetuses from a continual circling. So even when they are born, they don't have that instinctive uh, knowledge how to approach their mother. So when we are born, we have to learn everything to survive on the earth and also to be regenerated spiritually. So this means first, we need to continually learn and acquire knowledge. And second, we cannot survive without mothers caring, their nurturing, their loving, and their instruction. That's why we honor or mothers and the feminine characteristic granted from the Lord, which makes young ladies, young girls into mothers. As we learn various things, new ideas, unused skills, and fresh experiences allow us to be in a state of continual flux then we keep experiencing new states naturally and spiritually. Our loving and caring mothers, so were not great mothers from the beginning. They are growing into that role and they are equipped with their capability later on in their process. So if we look at baby girls, they are cute and beautiful, but they are not that different from baby boys from the beginning. And external changes and external differences are very easy to detect. We think external or bodily changes are sort of a domineering when it comes to all uh, changes and transformation. But the truth is our inner qualities and the changes of our inner faculties and inner qualities cause that external change and bodily transformation. So a little girl grows into a young woman and she should become a wife and then she becomes a mother. This is possible because female and male created it to be the image of marriage of good and truth. So, this is in the activity scene. Mary, as a maiden, 
she received a prophecy from Gabriel, and she accepted that. And then she became a mother. So every woman, uh, steps by step, by guidance of the Lord, from a little girl, and they become into a very capable and great mothers. So female is created to be an image and a picture of the will of God, in a word, goodness. And male is created to be the image and the picture of the understanding of a truth, in a word, truth. These distinctive essential qualities lie in the female and male from their inmost, their source, to their ultimate bodies. As good and truth are united as one originally in the Lord, good and truth implanted in the female and male are inclined into conjunction to be one. This conjunction is marriage. In this process, a specific love and maybe an impulse from love from the Lord is involved. It is not yet conjugal love. It is called the love for the opposite sex. And this love for the opposite sex is universal and natural. Because it is universal, all creatures in nature receive this specific love from the Lord, from their creation. So out there all creatures, animals, birds in the air, and including human beings, we receive this, the love for the opposite sex from our creation. And it is natural because it is not really with one person. But it is possible with several people why we really seriously taking one person to be our eternal partner. So later, this love turns to be uh, conjugal love. So the love of opposite sex precedes our genuine conjugal love. But we are all born into the capability to develop and to have a conjugal love later. And this conjugal love is possible only between one husband and on one wife. And it is a spiritual love we receive from the Lord. So human beings are only uh, capable to have this special love from the Lord. So the marriage progresses, then in the case of people who are spiritual, a love for the opposite sex is banished and conjugal love insinuated. The changes of state takes place successively from infancy to maturity. The changes of a form's love for the understanding of a man or a will in a female, as it gets mature, perfects the body and make it ready for future conjunction marriage. Because the mind acts upon the body so everything uh, happens in our internal states first, and then that can be manifested on our external forms. The heavenly doctrines for the new churches state that when young people reach an age midway between immaturity and maturity, they develop an attraction to marriage. They have an urge for the conjunction. However, it is a young lady, young woman, or a female who inspires the love, marriage, and union in her loving young man or husband. Though men think we have that urge and we initiate the process, but we are 
manipulated by wise women. However, the truth is that a female infuses such an urge in a male because only female receives the conjugal love directly from the Lord. And women give it to their loving man. So man and male do not have the capability. Only we need to receive it from our dear wives. Marriage induces different uh, forms on their souls and minds and their bodies. They become different after marriage. They come to possess inner beauty. The husband receives the charming blush of wife's love. And the wives receive from their husbands shining splendor of wisdom. So married partners become united in respect their souls first and then to the external bodies. A woman's transformation from a little girl into a wife is beautifully described in our reading, the book of Genesis chapter 2, where the rib is taken from a sleeping man, Adam, and this rib was transformed into a woman and a wife. And in this uh, story, a rib represents, symbolically means, our natural truth, which will become wisdom later. So when the Lord creates a human being, human being has two different loves. Love of becoming wise, and then acquiring that wisdom, uh, love of wisdom. And the Lord forces, if these two loves stay in one person, it will turn into a selfish love. So the Lord devised these two loves. The Lord has granted love of becoming wise, love of becoming wisdom. The Lord gave it to a male. And love of that wisdom, the Lord has given to female. So they're supposed to be one, and they're supposed to be united in a person as they are united in the Lord. That's why we have that strong desire and very instinctive inclination toward the opposite sex. And the Lord sees the beauty of the joint and the unity of, the, of these two different essential qualities. So they compensate each other, they respect each other, they love each other. And this transformation, and a lady, a young woman, becomes a wife by receiving an image of her, his wisdom, husband's wisdom, and she draws the assimilation of his affection onto her. And then a lady becomes a wife. And this process happens unconsciously without our uh, awareness. That's why it is described that this happens while uh, Adam is sleeping. From this marriage, the husband and wife, they share conjugal love, and then children are born. Then wife and husband become mother and father. The love of offspring, the parental love toward the children, origins from conjugal love from the Lord. As we talked about, the conjugal love is received by women directly first, so the love of offspring, a parental love, in mothers first. That's why women, even the little girls, have a very tender love toward babies and young children. And they have a very special care and love toward the children because they receive it directly from the Lord into their conjugal love. 
That's why we honor our mothers for their conjugal love and their love of children, love of offspring that is engraved on the conjugal love. Without women, wives, mothers, men, husbands, and fathers cannot experience the beautiful conjugal love and love of offspring because they are discreet, directly received to a feminine vessel from the Lord. So not feeling that conjugal love, not feeling our love toward children, it would be very disastrous. We are missing really fundamental portion of our life. So thank you ladies for your gifted nature and capacity to receive that precious jewel of human life, Christian life, and the repository of a Christian religion, Christian church, and for sharing it with us, men. Genuine love of offspring and children, which is called the storge in a Greek term, flows in by means of conjugal love from the Lord. This means conjugal love has to proceed, precede love of offspring. When we have a truly conjugal love between one husband and one wife, we can have true love of offspring by means of that conjugal love. Moreover, conjugal love is according to the state of the church with a person. In other words, it is from our religion and depends on the quality of my own religion. We should be good new Christians first. And then we can be good wives and husbands. And then we can be ready to be good, ready to be good parents. This is the order of the Lord. We honor and appreciate our wonderful mothers today and the beauty of the love you cherish and you share it with us. We are very thankful. Here's a reading from the word. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Amen.